Hello everyone and welcome to Live Art Mini. I'm Amanda Joy and this is Morgan. Morgan, hi. And today we are going to be talking about an artist named Visa Butler. Um, this is our final week of Women's History Month and we're super excited to talk about this artist. But before we get started, we are going to, we'd like to thank our sponsor. So let's give a quick shout out to Symmetry. Boutique Hi, my name is Debbie. I'm here at Symmetry Boutique and Gallery. I am Sherry Armstead's daughter, and we want to thank you for your continued support of our small local business here in Fairfield. Inside Out Studio has always been a mission that Sherry and Symmetry has supported in their mission to help young artists and giving them opportunities. If you're new to Symmetry and our store, please come in and visit us at 1000 Sims Road. Mention that you saw the Inside Out Studio video and receive 10% off your next purchase. Take care. Thank you. All right. Thanks again to Symmetry Boutique and Gallery. Without their support, this program would not be possible. So we are super excited to bring you live art me today. Uh, and I will show you the artist we're going to be talking about. This is artist Visa Butler. She is a contemporary artist. Um, she's a fiber artist, which if you're not familiar, uh, means that she works with fabrics. And um, she actually makes really bright and colorful quilts. So the um, image behind her is actually one of her artworks and it's about the scale of the artwork that she makes. She makes really large scale quilts um, that depict and celebrate uh, black life from everyday people to notable historical figures. And through her quilt quilts, um, Butler aims to, to tell stories that may have been forgotten over time. And she uses different kinds of cloths that are really important from to her, her own heritage. Um, she uses um, uh, Ghanaian textiles. Um, her father was from Ghana. And she also uses African wax printed fabrics in her quilts. Um, and she likes to adorn her subjects uh, with uh, cloth from her ancestors, is the way she says it. So you can tell in the background these really beautiful, bright colors. And we'll uh, continue to look at some of her artwork. Here's another piece. Um, this would be considered a piece um, from uh, people from everyday life. And you can tell her colors um, even go to the skin tones. She doesn't use typical skin tone colors. She's using really bright uh, blues, deep blues and reds for the shadows uh, to give us just a whole different feeling when we're looking at these figures than a typical portrait. And um, Bisa Butler was born in New Jersey in 1973. And uh, like I said, she's a contemporary artist, which means she's still making artwork today. And we'll continue to show you some more of these as we run through her uh, background. And she said in an interview that as a child, she always watched her mother and grandmother sew, and they taught, they taught her. And she says after um, a class that she took in college, she made a quilt for her grandmother on her deathbed, and she's been quilting ever since. But before she started quilting, she actually was in school for painting and decided that um, painting was uh, a little too boring for her. She was more interested um, in this more um, textile uh, and what's the word tactile kind of artwork. Um, and as you can tell, she's really successful with what she does. So her quilts both heavily incorporate African textiles as well as expanding on a rich African American quilting tradition. She explains in her artist statement, African Americans have been quilting since we were brought to this country and needed to keep warm. Enslaved people were not given large pieces of fabric and had to make do with scraps of cloth that were left, over, left if their clothing were out. From these scraps, African American quilt aesthetic came into being. My own pieces are reminiscent of this tradition, that I use African fabrics from my father's homeland of Ghana, batiks from Nigeria, and prints from South Africa. So not only is the imagery really important to Bisa Butler and her um, background, but even the fabrics that she's using are directly tied to her culture um, and her heritage. So every little piece of her artwork um, has meaning, not just the subject, but even the materials that she's using. So 
Um, Bisa typically uh, works with bright jewel tones rather than representational colors to, de to depict skin tone. Her color can, um, serves to convey the emotions of the individual in her quilt rather than the actual complexions. And you can really get a sense in this image, um, the figures, um, the skin tone is not what you would see in an everyday person. This is really the artist's take on um, skin tone. And here's one, um, and the artist, we talked about Lisa Butler just earlier today, and we really, um, everybody was really into the way she used the color specifically in this one uh, with the face. It just feels really natural in a way, even though they're really bright colors, it's just really working to kind of give us a feeling of this. And we want to take a moment to say hey to Kathleen. Hi, Kathleen. Hi, Kathleen. Hi, Kathleen. And we'll see her tomorrow. Awesome. She'll be in the when she's in the studio. So, um, let's see. Uh, Bisa Butler's artwork often features uh, famous figures in black history, such as Jackie Robinson, uh, baseball player Frederick Douglass, which I have a photo of. This is her portrait of Frederick Douglass. Again, super bright colors, um, using those bright jewel tones to, uh, for the skin tone. And um, those different, definitely those, uh, I can tell those South African uh, prints in the fabric. Um, she's also done Josephine Baker. She uses a variety of pattern fabrics, which she carefully selects to reflect the subject's life, sometimes using clothing worn by the subject. So in her, her portrait of, this one is of Nina Simone, who's a famous singer. Um, in this one, she uh, uses cotton, silk, velvet, and netting um, to reflect what Nina Simone would have actually worn. And here's another one of a famous person. This is Jean Michel Basquiat, who we talked about uh, a couple weeks ago on Live Art Mini. And in this one, um, she is using leather and cotton and vintage denim to really kind of reflect Basquiat's personality and his style. Um, so along with her portraits of famous people, she also really likes to create pieces of everyday unknown African-American subjects that she bases off of found photographs. So you can see this picture of this little girl. Um, we were talking in the studio about how much energy she captures in this, in this picture. You can really get a sense of that little girl moving and her um, uh, love her shirt that says smart girls rock and uh, I think Mary said it looks like there's fireworks in the background so again lots of energy and color and movement but this would be an example of um, kind of these unknown stories that she likes to tell so, so in her own words she says I feel these people I know these stories because I have grown up with them my whole life she strives to, quote, bring as many of these unnamed people's photos to the forefront so people will see ordinary folks as deserving of spotlight, too. And her pieces are done in the scale of life. Again, we'll go back to the picture of Lisa Butler herself. Um, this, the subjects are actually like the scale of a person. So she says when you're looking at one of these pieces, it really um, it's almost like you're looking someone in the eyes, like they're the, the scale that that you would be about that size so today we are going to be making our own uh, fabric pieces an example that um, i made last week this is um, Catherine johnson who was an african-american mathematician who on the bottom there you can see her little whoops her arm's going off no, I have <laughs> Oh, live. You never know what's going to happen live. So, um, Catherine Johnson was a mathematician who, without her calculations, men would have not gone to the moon. So, um, in the spirit of Bisa Butler, we're going to shine some light on some people who are underrepresented. So, one is Catherine Johnson, and I will flip over to our, on our, um, Light box here. This is an, an image. It's actually upside down. You want to flip that around yeah. real quick there. <laughs> this is what it looks like forwards, but we're actually going to work with it <laughs> oh, okay. um, in reverse. Yep. Um, and we're going to use this image to trace onto a paper like 
Yep, it's called Substance. it's called fusible webbing is what we're gonna use to um, attach all the fabric together. It's actually I'm gonna switch back here. It's this stuff if you've ever seen it in the fabric store, and it's called heavy duty heavy duty wonder under. It's fabric backed fusible webbing, and it comes in a roll kind of like this, um, and has. Oh, excuse me. I'm it has kind of two layers and one is like a glue layer. So when we iron it, it's going to stick the fabric together. And it's meant to only be temporary, so that's why it kind of this first one, her arm is <laughs> coming off a little bit. But um, So we're going to show you the process of taking an image and turning it into a piece of fabric art. So I'm not sure if Bisa Butler uses this type, this process. Um, I know that she has a really cool sewing machine in a video that I watched of her. It's a giant, um, really cool thing. But so we're going to show you a process that we learned actually from a visiting artist uh, who came several years ago to Inside Out Studio. Her name was Kate Gorman, um, and she taught us this process of turning fabric or drawings and images into fabric images. So we're going to show you how to do that today. And the um, so the second woman we're talking about here, this is Madam C.J. Walker. Let's see, hard to get her in the frame. She was actually, um, according to Guinness Book of World Records, the first self-made millionaire, um, the first woman self-made millionaire in America. Um, and she was a black woman. So we're going to, um, Start, Morgan, like what she said earlier, the important thing is to flip over our image so that in the end it turns out right side up. And now we need to get our web, web paper. Feasible webbing. Feasible webbing. We're going to do some treats. I'm getting a Sharpie to outline, we're going to do her head and her upper body today. I'll start with, I'll start with her upper body. Upper body of her shirt. Okay, so we have it uh, kind of already outlined and Morgan's gonna go over each section. Um, almost like if you're, It'd be the same if you were like gonna cut a picture out of different colors of colored paper or something. So we're just breaking it down into little sections. And Morgan's doing a great job tracing this out. And wait a minute, make sure our iron. So if you're gonna do this at home, you would need um, fabric, fusible webbing, and iron. A light box definitely helps for tracing. You can also use a window. And then to what trace I things. do is that line there too. No, we don't have to do that. We'll just do the outline. Okay. Perfect. So then we're going to take that and then we're going to choose our fabric. And we have one kind of lined up here for her shirt. We're going to flip it over so the back backward side is up. And then we're going to place mm -hmm. this on here. Yep. Put that right on our fabric. And then you're going to iron it so that the glue sticks to the fabric. Mm -hmm. Give it some heat and that's just going to melt that webbing. Be really careful not to melt your electrical cords that are sitting around. <laughs> <laughs> so this is uh, stuck to this. It's ironed on. It's kind of hot. And then the next step is cutting it out. Morgan's going to cut it out. Actually, Morgan, do you want to switch these? I'll cut and then you can do another piece on there. Sure. Since you're able to buy that. So we'll kind of multitask here today. Did so you hand this to me the way it's supposed to go? Other way. Yep. Yeah. There's like a bumpy side and a smooth side to the fusible webbing. The bumpy side is the, the webbing side itself, which is glue. So you want to draw on the side that's smooth, like. Uh, like parchment paper kind of. 
And then for the head, am I doing the head by itself and then the hair by itself? Yep. Okay. Good job. Thanks, Brett. What are you working on over there, Brett? I think I just finished it. Finish up a glass piece. Awesome. Okay. So I'm just going to cut this out and we'll start to get her set up here. We got a couple pieces that we got ready. And then do you want me to trace the eyes on here too? That would be on a separate, like you could scoot it over. Yep. So you want to do all your pieces individually because it's all going to be a different piece of fabric. Let's go this way this way. Line it up and up. There, I think that's like that. Sorry, you worry about that. <laughs> <laughs> you kind of jump in the head of the... Is that okay? Are those too close together? No, that's perfect. Can I do our lips there too? Yes. Yeah, we'll cut that up. Wow. Oh, wait, that's because I'm using this And the hair. If you have a lot of uh, pieces, it's good to label them. But I think we have enough pieces here, we can probably figure out where things go. When you're cutting out your shapes, you want to cut them around the black line. Mm -hmm. Right. Because then once it's ironed on, then you're going to go on the scissors and cut out the exact shape. Right. So that, that has a lot of area around it so that we can iron it on. Mostly we do that because we, we're going to have to peel off the webbing, and that makes it easier yeah. if we um, cut it afterwards. So we have this one. Okay, so if we want to flip that over so we can start to match up. So this one this way. Yeah, that goes there. It's like a puzzle. Yeah, that's that arm. Mm -hmm. So we can actually start to sit these on here to see what pieces we have. We're going to use, um, kind of in the style of Pisa Butler, instead of using skin tone, typical skin tone colors, we're using a blue color for her face and hair. And then this is what the finished piece is going to be going on. Right. Yep, there, that's our background. So I don't know if there are any quilters out there. This process might be familiar. So you want to cut out that's still a hot. That's all right. Yeah, um, you took both pairs of scissors. There they are. Thank you. I'm a scissor stealer. Not really. <laughs> I try not to. Okay. Can't tell. So again, when you're ironing, you always want to iron it down to the what they call the wrong side or the back side of the fabric, so that the other side is facing up. And you got it. That's right, Brett. You got to be careful of that hot iron. Don't burn yourself or your computer cords that are all around. <laughs> so. Sorry, I didn't burn myself. I was wondering. <laughs> I 
And then I'll take a little minute to remind everybody our annual fundraiser called Shift is coming up on May 15th. And at the end, Brett's going to give us a little reminder about it. We'll wait on that, Brett. Um, but I just want to give you a heads up here that you can find tickets for it on our uh, on our Facebook page and on our website. There's a little um, tab on the website that says Shift, and there you can find all about tickets. And tickets this year are sold in a due to COVID procedures, you can buy a square. So you can find all about that, how to buy tickets in the square. You can find out on our website or on our Facebook page. And it is gonna be an awesome rockin' party. We're gonna have live painting. We're gonna have all kinds of fun music and food. Brett's probably gonna be painting something. You never know what's gonna happen. All right, so we got her hair. Oh, is it not? The tricky. There we go. Just needed to put away that extra. These scissors don't like to put. It's a switch. So you can see it's kind of starting to come together. Once you get the pieces made, it's a lot, just like a puzzle. Once you can get your scissors to cut right. <laughs> Sharp scissors are dangerous yet helpful. And then we're gonna I'm gonna use a permanent marker to draw her. Can I switch scissors with you? Yes, ma'am. And get this last piece. No whammies, no whammies. <laughs> All right. All right, and the face is a little off. We're gonna work on the face. So the next step is going to be, this has this, um, these, the stuff that's on the background is still like a papery substance. So now we're going to peel that off, which can be kind of tricky. So like this, and also very satisfying. So we're going to peel yeah. off <laughs> this. You want to work on that one? I thought it was not like Start to sit them on here. There's actually a movie. This uh, speaking of uh, Madam C. J. Walker. There's a movie called Self Made that came out recently. Is it, it's old. Oh, I thought it was newer. Um, what did you say there? Oh. Awesome. Those eyes are the tricky part. <laughs> Maybe the fate, yeah. Let's start with the face. Okay, I'm gonna try the eyes. So we really s simplified the shapes on this uh, for time's sake. But like in Pisa Butler, she uses Lots and lots of little fabrics. I'm going to show you another one of a face of hers. So she's got lots of tiny, tiny little pieces of fabric that come together to make all the different highlights and shadows on the face. 
And this, we are doing a super simplified version of that. But just so you can kind of get the gist. And if you are so inspired, maybe you'll make some of your own fabric artwork. And if you do, we'd love to see it. Yeah, so take pictures and put it on your Facebook and tag Inside Out. That's right. Love to see what you guys create. And just a reminder too, these videos are always on, you can see all of our videos on our YouTube channel, just Inside Out, it's Inside Out Studio. Was that, if you forget to watch it, you can watch it on YouTube? Yeah, yep, yeah, right. She's coming together. Smock on with my pokey stick. <laughs> I'll try to get it right where it's going to do. Get her arms on, she's coming together. and hope there's no glue on our iron. <laughs> Get it all to stick down. Ah! Oh no, I didn't peel that eye, did I? See, there's always something. So that's the journey of making art. As Bob Ross would say, there are no mistakes. Just happy accidents. That's right. The worst part is if you, if you put it on and um, the glue is facing the iron, then you'll get a stuck piece to your iron. And that's no fun. All right. So this is what we started with, our picture. And this is what we ended up with, our cloth piece. Awesome. Yes. So this is what you would call fabric art. So here is our finished little simple picture of Seton yeah. Adams and Jay Walker. Thank you, Brad. Thank you. Thank, Good you. Job, thank you. Thank you. We did it. So you could, in, in what Bisa Butler did and what um, Kate Gorman, who originally taught us this, taught us, is you would go back afterwards and take your sewing machine and sew around the edges of things. Everything's backwards, so I don't know where I'm pointing. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> so you would sew that so it makes it all permanent. And then you could put that on a, a bag or turn it into a quilt. You could do a lot of different put things. Put it on a pillow. Put it on a pillow. Uh, we've definitely done some things like that here in the past. So that is that fun process. Um, if you have any comments, we'd love to hear what you know or what you think about Bisa Butler's artwork in the comments. It was really exciting to talk about a fiber artist um, and it kind of exposed you all to that new stuff. And we have Brett is going to come on down and give us a reminder. Yep. Buy tickets to shift on May May 15th. Thank you, Brett. Awesome. And have a good day. And have a good day. Thank you everybody so much for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.